Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the Stock Market Weekly News. That's right, ladies and gents. I hope you're excited. We got a, uh, a good one for you coming up here. A lot of news happened this week. Um, none other than the week of, um, you know, what the heck was this week? September 18th through the 22nd. That's what it was. You already know it. Um, a, a good bit of news. Obviously, you know, some economic data as well that comes out. A very important Fed meeting that occurred. And we'll get into that, obviously, first, as it's probably the most important news uh, data of the week. Led to the most movement in the market. And it was a pretty rough week overall um, on the week. There, There is no doubt about that. So, uh, and obviously, as you see headline here, we'll just get right into this. Starting with the S&P 500 down 3% here on the week, and you want to know why? It came from the Fed meeting itself. Now, the Fed did hold interest rates steady, so that is something that's worth noting, and, you know, actually a good thing, right? Uh, not a shocker at all. There was no expectation. Um no expectation at all that they would raise interest rates this time around. I mean, the, the, there was just no chance of it. Now we get into a concern where there is definitely the potential, uh, from what I've seen here, most likely a skip in October as well. And then November, they may pick up. Now, one thing that's noteworthy here, uh, as we kind of get into that too, um, there is definitely, uh, you know, signaled at least one more rate hike this year with fewer rate uh, cuts in 2024. And, and that right there, um, basically, you know, w- what does that mean? It means they may not start cutting interest rates until 25 to 26. Pretty concerning, right? You know, if you're obviously an investor in this um, in this market, you're, you're in here for, you know, uh, the long run, ideally, and, and you know, interest rates being high for longer is just economically pretty disastrous. It hurts quite a bit. Um, you know, not only going to stall people in terms of spending, obviously, um, it's part of the effort, obviously, because all these credit card spending is uh, bonkers. By the way, people are spending ridiculous amounts. Credit card delinquencies continue to rise. Credit card debt continues to rise. So, you know, hopefully some of this, you know, keeping the rates higher for longer means your, you know, credit card interest is going to cost you more technically on a percentage basis, uh, IPY uh, standpoint. Uh, obviously hurts new home purchases. That's definitely going to hurt uh, well, and existing. So just any home purchases, obviously it is going to slow down on that aspect uh, because if you're where you're at right now, it's it's pretty difficult to talk yourself into a you know, over 7% interest rate on a new house. If your current house is at a 3%, somewhere around there, it's really hard to talk yourself into that to nearly double your interest rate, you know, over double, I should say, which means the interest you pay over the long run is double. That's a significant amount of money when you're talking about a, let's just say hypothetically, you you did do a $200,000 loan, let's just say on like a Two hundred fifty thousand dollar house, which is hard to find anymore, unless it's literally like exploded a meth lab that that was exploded in the basement. You could probably get that for about two hundred fifty thousand. Um, but you know it hurts. It, it's going to hurt a lot of the economy, and and, and because of that, we saw stocks kind of get a little bit uh, skittish, and they retreated a decent bit. So, and it's not shocking. Now, I'm not concerned here again something we've noticed here economic and i've said it for a long time i've told you inflation is unfortunately not going anywhere we as a country and obviously the administration itself not doing a ton to really curb inflation there's only so much the fed can do by boosting these interest rates it's just unfortunately not in the cards for us right now uh we're we're just failing in a lot of different ways economically and and that's just going to hurt us it's something we have to accept at this point so that's that's going to be your news as far as the kind of general market. We can get into some company specific ones. Um, starting off with with actually a good piece of data. Um, get this out of here. What uh, can I not? What 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 is wrong with this? You're going to give me an ad. It better not be an ad on the next one. Okay, it's not. Um, just an ad on this for some reason, and I can't X out of it. They don't have an X. F U seeking alpha. You're about to lose me. Anyways, Microsoft increased. 
their dividend by 10% to 75 cents a share. Now, again, not crazy. We're talking about a forward yield of 0.91%. But the reason I highlight this, well, obviously a 7 cent increase isn't nothing. Uh, but it just goes to show you how, you know, a lot of these big tech companies and really just these in general big companies have really been doing a great job at coming back to that extreme level of profitability, Microsoft being one of them. They're an incredibly profitable company that puts out a ton of cash flow. And for that reason, they're able to increase this dividend by a healthy chunk. 10% is not a small amount. Let, let, let it be clear, folks. Uh, let us just be honest with you. So pretty impressed there. Uh, it's a great raise for them. Um, a great raise. So very excited to see that from Microsoft, especially as a shareholder, let me tell you that. Our next bit of info is, hey, um, we had another IPO this week, actually. It's going to be Instacart, uh, you know, formerly, well, actually actually known as Maple Bear Incorporated. Probably one of the stupidest, uh, stupidest, uh, the most ridiculous, idiotic piece of garbage names I could think of. Maple Bear, what are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, I guess that, you know, it's the parent company that owns Instacart, but still, uh, kind of dumb. Anyways, off their IPO, not kind of shocked there, but they did rise about 13%, representing about an $11.5 billion valuation, so pretty massive. Um, I will say, you know, the original uh, estimation there was, was going to be somewhere around the 28 to $30 range. You take a look at how it performed the rest of the week. Well, hey, look at that. It's It's actually just kind of sitting where it was so that's rough did you hear that um the, the voice cracked the voice cracked ladies and gentlemen i'm a 26 year old man i'm a man i'm 40 uh but yeah that's you know it really no movement obviously it rose quite a bit on day one but not really anything else since then so kind of back to where it re retreats at next one a bit of concerning information actually you know if, if you're me i think most people should think this is kind of concerning but we finally had the first Neuralink human trials are beginning now, which is kind of kind of wild. Um, they've received approval for uh, human trials, so um, they do explain, um, you know, the Neuralink. They do explain exactly what this entails. So during the study, the R1 robot will be used to be surgical uh, to surgically place the N1 implant ultra-fine flexible threads in the regions of the brain that control movement and tension. Um, so again, we talk about this, and it's definitely interesting in, in some aspects. So, And I talked about this, too, when I talked about Neuralink before. It's What really excites me about this is the main function here that they're after is to cure people with motor function disabilities or a lack of motor function at all. Um, there is hope that there's potential that this could basically, you know, I, I don't know the science of it, but could override, um, you know, basically the signaling in your brain that, you know, if you were necessarily, let's say, like, you know, if you were paralyzed and you didn't have the uh, nervous system to do that, it could potentially override that. And, not only give you a feeling there, give you motor function. Curious to see what that actually entails and how it actually works. But um, the concerning part is when you get thinking about the fact that you've got a piece of technology in your brain that potentially is not, you know, or, or could be something that gets controlled, okay? Uh, that's where we get a little concerning with that. The initial process of what it could do, right, uh, is pretty exciting. You know, the, the, the potential of that. Uh, to potentially transmit brain signals um, is is interesting. The concern though comes with, like I said, there what that entails, uh, you know, for the future. I don't know. Anyways, on to our next bit. There is uh, a pretty interesting one there too. You know, Walmart just continues to dominate the retail sector. Brick and mortar is not going anywhere. Walmart shows you that, but they've also announced they're planning to take uh, steps into providing pet services. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, you look down here and they're actually looking at providing uh, routine veterinary care, you know, your vaccines, wellness uh, exams, grooming potentially, which is interesting because um, not necessarily, you know, it's not necessarily something that's set up in Walmarts right now. So it would be something they'd have to expand to or obviously do a remodel. Walmarts are always going through remodels. I mean, you're talking about every 
uh, every five years or so, the the stores get a massive remodel. Um, late, you know, it's been a little more frequent lately. I used to work on uh, and have to do remodels. Um, always a fun time, by the way. It was actually a pretty pretty decent gig. The only thing is, you know, doing the uh, the overnight piece of it is not fun, uh, but it is definitely interesting, you know, uh, to see what they draft up. And obviously, this is going to be coming to fruition on some of their next. Uh, obviously, they're just, you know, if you have a Walmart near you, you know, they and they probably already have undergone a pretty massive reset there. Um, like just recently a store reset. So I don't know how f- soon this is in the line. Um, but yeah, it makes sense. So massive pet spending going on there. Pet industry is expected to reach $277 billion by 2030. And they're, you know, one thing that's pretty cool to me is this self-service dog wash thing, potentially. I'm not sure what that looks like, but hey, could be a massive trend or, you know, really a massive boost. Just some additional revenue for, for Walmart in space they're potentially not using even. So we'll, we'll see what that looks like, but it's uh, Walmart just continues to do well. So I'm very glad to have a good chunk of Walmart. We have another dividend raise, ladies and gentlemen, and it is going to be the Starbucks. Um Starbucks raising 7.5% to 57 cents about a you know it's only a 4 cent increase which I say only but not bad at all 2.4% yield now uh off of prices that are well I think they're a little cheap on this stock I really do um So yeah the company they do note here um raised it in by 7.5% after paying a quarterly dividend in each of the previous four quarters so they did uh uh, makes sense because they raise it every year. So kind of a stupid bullet point, but they mentioned it. So they did pay 53 cents the last four quarters, and then they raised it 7.5%. Eh, stupid point. Um, anyways, we we know this. The company's dedicated to that. They will raise the dividend every single year. It's what they do. They generate a lot of free cash flow. Been hurt a little bit here in the last couple of years just with everything going on. Obviously, you start with COVID and, and, and things of that nature. Um, and just limiting to them. But, it, it, you know, I think they're back, baby. And they're able to afford this, so that's not too bad. Uh, our next bit is kind of a weird one, kind of a more obscure one, which it's just I just found it weird. Um, Neo launching a high-end smartphone for use with their their electric cars. I, I don't know what exactly this means, um, I, but basically it's going to sync with the Neo cars and act as a key fob. I kind of weird there. Um, you can view information on the car. I feel like you can just do that in an app i don't know if you really need to have a whole new device for that um very expensive too by the way we're talking about as you can see here about a thousand dollar phone i don't even know what to expect there um i i don't know it's just really weird it just seems like a weird weird thing for them to do i understand why they're doing it trying to expand into you know potentially some other fields there just kind of weird weird bit of news um Speaking of the EVs, we've got Tesla talking about uh, expanding potentially into India um, with the proposal of battery storage systems here. So uh, looks definitely like it's, it's going to be happening there. And, it, and India is, a, you know, it's basically a lot of these companies right now, you'll notice, are trying to get in India. There's a lot of untapped potential there. Uh, obviously a very, very populous country. I mean, no doubt. I mean, I think it's, am I wrong there? Is it the second most populous country in the world? Um let me see. Uh, most populous. Oh, that's bad. Countries. Uh, let's see. I thought India was number two. It's number one. I'm an idiot. Wow. Uh, it was pretty close. I thought China was for sure number one. But uh, I guess India, because this last year they rose population by 0.81, actually took the, took the dub. So number one populous country. Obviously, it's a massive, massive market there. Uh, people are flocking, apparently. Net migrants going down. Um, so, yeah. Um, but anyways, all they're really doing here is to set up an electric vehicle factory to build cars. Um, so, pretty nice. So, that's a broad goal there. So, we'll see. There's a massive market there, and a lot of companies are trying to get into India for show. We have a massive, massive deal announcement with Cisco announcing that they are looking uh, to acquire Splunk. For $28 billion, Splunk, one of these companies that had the evaluation explode really over the last uh, couple of years around 2020, valuation just took off, off of really not necessarily any, you know, any backing to it. Obviously, a little bit of revenue growth, but nothing crazy, not extraordinarily high growth rates. Um, 
and it's since fallen down. Now, this $28 billion, obviously great for Splunk shareholders, who may have ridden the stock down quite a bit, um, that I believe at one point was valued over $100 billion because of how much the stock had risen. Um, so it, it kind of wild, $157 per share, which is a 31% premium to the close, which is pretty massive. And I think that goes to show uh, just how much Cisco believes in this deal. Definitely interesting because Cisco is such a boring, boring company. Um, and to see them make a deal like this is pretty wild. And it shows that they are looking to do some growth. I mean, they're tired of being boring and one of those just old school tech companies because that's what they are. They're, they're, they're really doing a good job here. And my pick, I, I think, is a fantastic acquirement. Uh, what? Um, anyways, uh, acquisition is what I meant to say um, by by Chuck Robbins himself. I think it's a fantastic deal. Obviously, paying a lot for the company, but I think it's something that, in the long term, not only brings more shareholders to Cisco, uh, just naturally by the attrition there, um, uh, arbitration, I should say, but also it just brings more interested people into it, right? They maybe wanted a bit getting Splunk before, but now they get into Splunk through Cisco, right? We'll see. That's very interesting. Obviously, it's going to go through regulatory review and everything of that nature. It's a massive deal, so it's going to be a while before anything closes there. Speaking of uh, acquisitions, we have the UK and, and issuing a preliminary approval. How? They've already approved it 18 times. What is going on? The UK is an absolute piece of garbage and needs to accept this deal. The Microsoft Activision merger is going to happen. You just need to let it happen. Otherwise, it keeps getting delayed and delayed. And people who own you know, Activision stock want this deal to go through. Let it happen, baby. Let it eat. Um, so the hope is, obviously, I, I know... Um, they're hoping it could happen prior to the October 18th deadline, as you see here, but who knows? Um, that approval is a good sign. If they get the approval here within the next, you know, couple weeks, they will close in October. Uh, my estimation is they will, so we'll see. Um, and speaking of garbage regulatory agencies, um, uh, we've got the FTC, uh, announcing their, you know, they're, they're going to be expected to file a suit on Tuesday coming up here against Amazon. Just get out of here. Let me tell you, um, I can't wait for the day that uh, the FTC doesn't hate America because right now they do. They just really do. Uh, basically saying there's unfair business practices, um, impossible for people to get into it, antitrust. I mean, get out of here. I, I just don't even want to talk about it. It sets me off. Um, we have Amazon talking about the fact that uh, Prime Video will have limited ads next year, so limited, obviously, in quotes there. Um, it is a concern. Look, and I talked about this from the start when we got into streaming. At the end of the day, streaming is just turning into cable, but obviously more delays because, you know, you're further behind on your stream than you were on your cable, uh, or even antenna, obviously, too. Um, and now we're still getting advertisements. We're still getting ads. So it, it, we've literally made no difference, right? Because with the, all the different uh, streaming providers you have to partake in and, and use to actually watch the content you want with all these exclusives, unfortunately, you're paying just as much, if not more, than you do with your cable plan. It, it's kind of annoying, uh, but I'm not shocked. I thought this would happen. Um, so, yeah, the Amazon, screw you for that. We're already paying for Prime. I, I get it. I get it. You're paying for Prime and you get it for free. But, like, you son of a gun, that's just annoying. We don't want ads. They're obviously going to offer a, you know, ad-free tier. Um, we have to pay extra for it, by the way. And then, finally, yet again, um, still not much news here on the, the United Auto Workers garbage union piece of trash losers waste of everybody's time ruining people's lives uh no talk on this anymore so more strikes at gm and uh and stellaris um uh or stellantis sorry i i don't even know what i was talking about a drug stellaris is a, is a freaking drug um but there was potential that they said Ford potentially had progress in talks. I know they did in Canada. They had a successful negotiation. Got a deal done there. Um, look, again, I've said it already. That it, it just irks me. You've already had Stellantis and GM now also announce layoffs. Um, and, and there will be more, unfortunately. They're just going to cut these people's jobs that are out on strike. It's just what happens. And eventually, if they need the jobs back, 
I most likely think they'll be outsourcing that. Um, it's just unfortunate, you know, these unions are costing people jobs when they're supposed to be protecting people jobs. So, um, and you have to pay money for it, by the way. You're not only paying them, you're paying them money, and they still can't keep your job safe. I just don't even, uh, it's just frustrating. Um, and it's inevitable, right? If, if these workers want, you know, a you know, 15% increase in their wage, well, actually, I think it was 20-something, 20 25% they wanted. If they want a quarter, that's wild. There's a massive increase, by the way. Um, if they want that big of an increase, you're going to have to lay people off to afford that. So, hey, uh, look what's happening. You reap what you sow. That's what I got for you, ladies and gents. You have a great rest of your freaking nights and days and every single thing under the sun, baby.